that article you sent about P. Diddy's arrest really got to me. I mean, not just the whole legal spectacle of it, but what the guy's actually going through right now, mm-hmm. you know, physically, mm-hmm. mentally. Mm-hmm. That part about his withdrawal mm-hmm. symptoms, intense. Yeah, it's easy to get caught up in the headlines, the gossip, but this, this is about the science of withdrawal, and honestly, it's brutal, and a lot of people don't get that. Exactly. So <laughs> today we're using this whole P. Diddy thing, this case, to really dive deep into withdrawal. Especially with that cocktail of drugs they're talking about in the article. Tushy, cocaine, ecstasy, it's a lot. And it's that combination that's what makes this deep dive so interesting, don't you think? 100%. We're not talking about your average hangover here. This is like your body, your brain, short-circuiting. So let's break it down. The article keeps saying Tushy's. What is that exactly? Like, is it worse than regular cocaine? So Tushy, sometimes it's called pink cocaine, but that's kind of misleading. It's not actually cocaine, not really. It's more like this mishmash, this concoction of different stuff. You'll often find a synthetic cathinone in there. Okay, so already sounds pretty bad. Oh, it gets worse. They mix it with other drugs, too. Sometimes MDMA, even ketamine. So it's like a designer drug, but designed to get you way higher. Exactly. And that's the danger right there. Cathinones on their own, super addictive. They hit you hard, a real stimulant effect. But then add the dopamine rush you get from cocaine and then top it off with a serotonin surge of ecstasy. You're talking about a recipe for disaster in your brain. Wow. Okay, so we've got three drugs, all messing with the brain in different ways. Can you walk us through what actually happens when these things get in your head? Especially like this, all together. Okay, so picture this. Your brain's reward system, right? Think of it like an orchestra. Everything's balanced, in tune. Now, cocaine and Tusi. They're cranking up the brass section. That's your dopamine, the feel-good stuff. And it creates this huge, powerful wave of euphoria. And the ecstasy that's bringing in the strings. Perfect analogy. So MDMA, that's what's in ecstasy. That one goes for your serotonin. Mood, feeling good, that sense of connection, even love, all serotonin. So now you've got this crazy symphony of pleasure going on that's like way too loud, you know, pushing everything to the limit. And the brain's not meant to handle that nonstop, right? Not even close. The brain, it always wants balance. So when you keep hitting it with these fake surges of dopamine, serotonin, it's got to compensate. It's like turning down the volume on some instruments just to try and even things out a bit. So it's trying to protect itself, but it's getting hooked on those external chemicals in the process. Exactly. And that's when things get really bad. Because say those substances disappear, like if you get arrested or something, like maybe what happened with P. Diddy the brain, it's freaking out. It doesn't have those artificial boosts anymore, and it hasn't had time to figure out how to make enough of its own happy chemicals again. And that's when withdrawal hits. Hard. It's like the whole body goes into shock. It's craving those missing chemicals, but remember... We're not talking about just one thing here. Three different drugs, and each one has its own withdrawal nightmare. It's a recipe for a really, really bad time. And that article, they did not hold back on how bad it can get, did they? Heart going crazy, shaking, the cravings. It's scary. It is. And we haven't even gotten to the mental torture yet, which honestly can be even worse than the physical stuff. But I think we need to give our listeners a minute to absorb all of this. Yeah, we'll definitely pick this up after the break. We've got to get into the psychology of this kind of withdrawal. It's way more than just a few bad days. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Back again. And man, before the break, we were really getting into it. That whole physical part of withdrawal, the body just freaking out without the drugs. It's wild. And as bad as that sounds, as rough as those physical symptoms are, it's the mental side of withdrawal that can really mess you up. Think about it. Your brain, the way it handles emotions, the way you understand the world, suddenly it's all out of whack. Yeah. And the article they mentioned P. Diddy might be having, like paranoia, hallucinations. I mean, that's serious stuff. What's actually happening in the brain to cause that kind of reaction when you're withdrawing from drugs? So remember how you're talking about the brain trying to find a balance, Mm -hmm. constantly adjusting to those huge rushes of dopamine, serotonin? Well, when you take away those chemicals, those reinforcements, the brain can't keep up. It's still trying to adjust, but it's behind the curve. And the result, it starts to misread things, misinterpret what it's seeing, hearing. That's where the paranoia comes in, the hallucinations. And let me tell you, they're very, very real to the person experiencing them. So with P. Diddy, if he's going through all of that, if he's feeling watched, threatened, like the article says, Mm. that's not him just being difficult or trying to get attention? No, not at all. It's so important to remember 
These experiences, as crazy as they seem to us, they're directly caused by the brain being completely out of balance. The paranoia, the hallucinations. To him, they're as real as you and me sitting here right now. That's huge for people to understand. It's not about judging how someone's acting. It's about understanding what's causing it. Yeah. That there's a scientific reason behind it. 100%. And then you add to that the situation he's in, according to the article, right? Jail. Mm. Isolation. Probably a very stressful environment, totally unfamiliar. All of that just amplifies those feelings of paranoia, that feeling of being lost, disoriented. Like being trapped in a nightmare you can't wake up from, but it's actually happening. Exactly. And this is where withdrawing from a drug cocktail, like the one P. Diddy was allegedly using, this is where it gets really dangerous. We've got the dopamine crash from the cocaine, the Tusai, mixed with the serotonin depletion from the ecstasy. It's like a one-two punch to the brain. And it leaves you so vulnerable, not just to the paranoia, the hallucinations, but to this crushing depression. It's interesting, you know, because when you think of ecstasy, you think of all those good vibes, that feeling of connection. But the after effects, that's a whole other story. It really is. You're riding high, your brain's swimming in serotonin, everything's amazing. But that serotonin, it gets depleted and the crash is hard. Mm. We're talking deep depression, fatigue, feeling hopeless. In a P. Diddy's case... If you're already going through the physical hell of withdrawal, the mental stress of paranoia, hallucinations, and then that depression hits you. It's like being buried under a mountain. You feel sick, your mind is playing tricks on you, and now you're drowning in this wave of despair. It's no wonder people in this situation, they start thinking about suicide. It, it can feel like there's no way out of the pain. We're back for the final part of this deep dive. I gotta say, this has been intense really eye-opening though you know yeah we've definitely dug deep into this one definitely challenged some of those those ideas people have about drug withdrawal wouldn't you say big time it's easy to think of withdrawal as something you just like power through like it's a few bad days you feel like you've got the flu but you get better but as we've been hearing it's ugh, it's so much worse than that yeah it's so much more complicated way more complicated and way more agonizing too the, look, you can't just compare it to the flu. That's ridiculous. We're talking about your brain physically changing, the chemicals in your brain getting all messed up because of addiction. Willpower's got nothing to do with it. So someone going through what we've been talking about, this kind of intense withdrawal, they can't just, I don't know, white knuckle it, tough it out. No way. Think of it like this. You wouldn't tell someone with a broken leg to just walk it off addiction, it's a real medical situation. You need professional help to handle those immediate symptoms because they can be excruciating. And then the long game, right, the behavioral stuff, the psychological stuff, all of that needs work. So how do you even start to manage those really intense withdrawal symptoms? Well, a lot of times it starts with medical detox, especially with a mix of drugs like this. Tushi, cocaine, ecstasy, it can get dangerous really fast. Doctors, they can keep an eye out for any complications. They can give you medicine to help with the nausea, the shakes, trouble sleeping. Just make sure you're hydrated, as comfortable as possible, well, yeah. because that first phase, it's rough. Makes sense. You need that medical support, for mm -hmm. sure. But that's not the whole story, is it? There's more to it than just getting those drugs out of your system. Exactly. Addiction, it's not just physical, right? It's mm -hmm. mental, emotional, so you've got to treat the whole person. That's where therapy comes in, counseling, support groups, all of that. Giving people tools to work through it so they don't relapse? Exactly. Therapy, it helps you figure out what's at the root of the addiction. It gives you healthier ways to deal with stress, the things that make you want to use. And then a lot of times there's other stuff going on too, right? Anxiety, depression, you got to address all of it. Help people build a new life, a stronger foundation. You know, thinking about P. Diddy again, the article talked about him being isolated. And it just struck me how much harder that must make it. Yeah. To be alone ashamed, like you can't ask for help. You're so right. Addiction, it loves secrets, it loves shame. If we want people to get help, individuals, their families, we've got to break down those barriers. Create a space where people feel safe, understood, not judged. Yeah. That's how you encourage people to come forward, to reach out. So important. Okay, as we wrap this up, this whole deep dive, what's the one thing we want to leave our listeners with today? I'd say this. Addiction, it's not a weakness. It doesn't make you a bad person. It's a health issue, plain and simple. And people struggling with addiction, they deserve compassion, they deserve treatment, and withdrawal. As awful as it is sometimes, it's the first step towards a better life. Perfectly said. So if anything we've talked about today has resonated with you, if you're concerned about yourself or someone you know, please, please reach out, get help. There is hope, I promise you. There's always hope for a healthier future. And don't forget, sometimes the best thing you can do is just listen. No judgment. 
Just listen. You'd be surprised how powerful that can be. So true. All right, everyone. That's a wrap on this deep dive, folks. It was a tough one, but an important one. Until next time, stay curious and stay compassionate. As a physician and psychiatrist, I've seen the devastating effects of drug addiction. But when an individual like Sean P. Diddy Combs, who has allegedly used multiple dangerous substances, including cocaine, ecstasy, 2CB, also known as 2Chi, and others, suddenly stops, the body and mind are thrown into chaos. These first few hours of withdrawal are nothing short of pure torment. When Diddy was using 2CB or 2C, his brain was flooded with chemicals that altered his perceptions, heightening his senses and distorting reality. Now that those chemicals are gone, his brain is desperately scrambling to restore balance. In the absence of Tucci, Diddy's central nervous system is thrown into disarray. The neurotransmitters that were once artificially elevated are now depleted, leaving his body and mind in freefall. His brain is starved of dopamine, the pleasure chemical, and serotonin, the chemical that regulates mood and happiness. Without these, depression sets in like a lead weight on his chest. The euphoria he once felt is replaced by an unrelenting sense of despair and hopelessness. But this is only the beginning. Cocaine withdrawal, on top of the effects of Tutsi, amplifies this misery. The stimulant, which kept him energized and alert, has been ripped away, leaving behind extreme fatigue, confusion, and violent mood swings. Diddy's heart rate has become erratic, thumping wildly one moment, slowing down alarmingly the next. His body's natural rhythm is lost, replaced by the erratic pulse of a system that has relied on artificial stimulation for far too long. Cocaine and Tutsi withdrawal also wreak havoc on the cardiovascular system. Diddy's blood pressure is spiking, his veins constricting, increasing his risk for a sudden stroke or even a heart attack. His muscles twitch uncontrollably, as if electrified, but there's no control, only chaos. This is what cocaine does to the body when it's denied the drug that it has relied on. Diddy's use of ecstasy, or MDMA, would have further complicated his current state. Ecstasy is notorious for rapidly depleting serotonin levels in the brain. The crash from MDMA withdrawal is not just a come down, it's an emotional catastrophe. His brain is incapable of producing enough serotonin to lift his mood. He's left in a deep pit of depression, anxiety, and potentially suicidal ideation. These emotions don't come in waves. They crash down on him all at once, like a tidal wave he cannot escape. But it's the withdrawal from Tucci, the psychedelic substance, that plunges him into a terrifying form of psychosis. Without the drug in his system, Diddy's mind begins to fracture. The vivid, distorted images and heightened senses he once experienced during his highs now twist into something far darker. Hallucinations, auditory and visual, haunt him. He hears voices that aren't there, sees shapes in the shadows of his isolation cell. The silence of the cell amplifies the torment. This is not simply discomfort. It is a full-scale mental breakdown. His sense of reality becomes warped. He's unable to differentiate between what's real and what's imagined. Every thought is amplified in his mind, racing uncontrollably. The paranoia begins to set in, and with it, the belief that something or someone is watching him. Every creak of the prison, every distant voice, becomes a threat. This is withdrawal psychosis. It's the most dangerous and terrifying aspect of stimulant and psychedelic withdrawal. In this state, Diddy could become a danger to himself. The hallucinations may tell him to harm himself, or he may believe he's trapped in a reality where the only escape is to end the suffering. He's isolated, without a support system, which only deepens the psychosis. Suicidal thoughts are not uncommon in this state. His body is betraying him, and his mind is following suit. Beyond the psychosis, Diddy's body is enduring unimaginable physical torment. His muscles, once powerful, are now in constant spasm. He's likely experiencing waves of intense pain shooting through his limbs as his central nervous system misfires. His skin crawls as if it's on fire, but there's no source of the pain. It's the sensation of withdrawal, nerve endings screaming for relief. 
His digestive system, ravaged by years of drug use, is rebelling. Diarrhea, vomiting, and stomach cramps rack his body, leaving him dehydrated and weak. His immune system, compromised by the constant strain of drug abuse, begins to shut down, opening the door for infection, fever, and further illness. He sweats profusely one moment, then shakes violently with chills the next. His body cannot regulate its temperature, its functions thrown into chaos without the drugs it has relied on. Breathing becomes a laborious task. His lungs struggle to expand as they once did, a result of stimulant abuse. His chest feels tight, and each breath is shallow and painful. It's as though his body is suffocating under the weight of its own dysfunction. Without proper medical intervention, there is a very real risk of seizures. The electrical activity in his brain has been thrown out of balance by years of stimulant use, and now that balance has been violently interrupted. Seizures can strike at any moment, potentially fatal if left untreated. Diddy's body is fighting back against itself, and it's losing the battle. Isolation is the worst place for someone in withdrawal, particularly someone experiencing psychosis. Diddy, confined to a cell without access to even a simple metal bed, is left alone with his thoughts. The cold, hard floor is his only contact point with reality. But the cell walls, the silence, and the isolation play tricks on his mind. The longer he's in this state, the more his condition deteriorates. His body and mind, both deprived of the substances they depended on, begin to wage war against him. The hallucinations grow stronger, the paranoia deepens. At times, he may feel like his chest is being crushed, his breathing quickening to the point of hyperventilation. His muscles are sore, like they've been stretched to their breaking point. His heart is erratic, sometimes racing uncontrollably, sometimes slowing to a terrifying crawl. The panic attacks are relentless each one sending waves of fear and dread through his body. There's no escape. The isolation amplifies every symptom. There's no distraction, no comfort, just the four walls of his cell and the screaming in his mind. His thoughts turn darker by the minute. How much longer can he endure this? The depression, the suicidal thoughts, they're not just fleeting, they consume him. It's easy to imagine Diddy pacing back and forth, muttering to himself, trying to make sense of the madness that's gripped him. Or worse, lying on the floor, staring up at the ceiling, tears streaming down his face as he pleads for relief that never comes. The pain is endless. Every second stretches into an eternity. His eyes are bloodshot, his vision blurred, his head pounds with the force of a sledgehammer. The worst part of stimulant and psychedelic withdrawal is that it doesn't relent. It only intensifies. As the hours pass, Diddy's body continues to break down. His central nervous system, deprived of the dopamine it craves, continues to misfire, sending waves of agony through him. His mind, still caught in the grips of psychosis, descends further into paranoia and terror. His chest tightens, his breathing becomes shallow and erratic, and the risk of a heart attack or stroke grows by the hour. By now, Diddy may be contemplating desperate measures. The cravings for drugs are unbearable. His mind and body scream for relief. Just one hit, one pill, anything to stop the pain, to silence the voices in his head. But there's no escape in isolation. The walls are closing in, and the suffering only grows. There's no telling how much longer he can endure this. Without medical intervention, without proper care, his body could give out. His mind could snap, the psychosis could lead him to do the unthinkable. This is the reality of withdrawal, a demonic possession that consumes every part of the mind, body, and soul. For Diddy, the first hours without Tucci, without ecstasy, without cocaine, are only the beginning of a nightmare that shows no signs of stopping. This is what drug withdrawal looks like. It's not glamorous. It's not a quick fix. It's a long, drawn-out battle against the very core of the body and mind. For Diddy, the suffering he's going through in these first hours without Tucci, cocaine and ecstasy is unimaginable. His body is screaming for relief, his mind is lost in a terrifying psychosis, and every moment is a test of his will to survive. 
As the hours continue, his condition does not improve. In fact, it's likely only getting worse. His body, once used to the powerful stimulants and psychedelics, now feels like it's being crushed under the weight of its own dysfunction. His central nervous system is in chaos, sending conflicting signals that manifest as uncontrollable shakes, muscle spasms, and even seizures. His heart, having relied on stimulants for so long, may begin to falter. His risk of heart attack or stroke increases with each passing hour. The erratic fluctuations in his blood pressure, combined with the intense stress on his cardiovascular system, create the perfect storm for a medical emergency. Every breath he takes feels shallow and labored, as if his lungs are no longer working in sync with the rest of his body. His head pounds, as though it's being split open from the inside. His eyes are bloodshot and unfocused, constantly shifting between the hallucinations caused by his psychosis and the crushing reality of his surroundings. His vision blurs as he tries to make sense of the world around him, but nothing feels real. The disconnection between his mind and body grows with each passing moment. He tries to focus, to bring his thoughts under control, but it's no use. His thoughts spiral out of control, racing from one paranoid delusion to the next. He's convinced that something is coming for him, that there's no escape from the torment he's experiencing. The psychosis has taken over completely now. He is no longer in control of his own mind. The drugs may be gone, but the damage they've done lingers on. Diddy's body is weak, fragile, and his immune system is shot. The prolonged use of stimulants has left him vulnerable to infection, fever, and illness. His temperature fluctuates wildly. One moment he's burning up, the next he's shivering uncontrollably. His body is losing the ability to regulate itself, and the risk of collapse grows with each hour. His mind, once sharp and focused, is now a battlefield. The hallucinations grow stronger, more vivid. The voices in his head become louder, more insistent. The paranoia deepens, and Diddy is convinced that he's being watched, that someone or something is coming for him. Every shadow in his cell seems to move, every sound becomes a threat, there is no escape from the terror in his mind. By this point his muscles are so tight, his joints so stiff, that he can barely move. Every inch of his body feels like it's on fire. His muscles ache, his bones feel like they're breaking from the inside. The cramps that rack his body leave him in constant agony. There's no relief from the pain, no way to ease the suffering. The vomiting and diarrhea continue, leaving him weak and dehydrated. His body, no longer able to hold anything down, begins to break down its own tissues for energy. He's losing weight rapidly, his face gaunt, his skin pale. The once powerful mogul is now a shell of his former self, brought to his knees by the very substances he once relied on. As his condition deteriorates, the risk of a stroke or heart attack grows ever more present. His heart, already under immense strain, could give out at any moment. His breathing, shallow and labored, could stop. A seizure could strike without warning, sending him into convulsions on the floor of his cell, his body unable to cope with the sudden lack of stimulants. This is the brutal reality of withdrawal from drugs like Tucci, ecstasy, and cocaine. It's not just the physical pain, it's the mental torment, the emotional breakdown, the loss of control over one's own body and mind. For Diddy, these first hours without drugs are nothing short of hell on earth. And the worst part is that this is only the beginning. The symptoms will only intensify as his body continues to fight for survival. The psychosis will grow darker, the cravings will become more intense, and the physical pain will reach levels that are almost unbearable. Without proper medical intervention, there's no telling how long he can endure this suffering, or if his body will even make it through the withdrawal process. This is the dark side of addiction. It's not just about getting high. It's about the devastating consequences when the drugs are taken away. For Diddy and others like him, the road to recovery is long, painful, and fraught with danger. The drugs may be gone, but the damage they've done is still very real and the fight to survive withdrawal is only just beginning.